and I'm always trying to make it quiet. But I don't think I can ever shut that off. It's the desire to make stuff, to repurpose, to create, simply to create. And that noise is what is constant. I see it in everything. I see shapes. I see colors. I see everything as a composition. And I want to break it down. I want to remake it. That's what I don't think I'll ever be able to stop. Is, is that desire, that want. I won't be able to stop the noise. And I like that. I've never really thought of it as a choice, something it's, oh, maybe I'll make something today. It's the decision not to make something is usually what it is at this point. Art is the one thing that I have complete control over, over everything in my life. Everything else, it happens. I can't control it. I just sort of allow it to deal with it. Art is the only thing that I can control. The idea of the starving artist was so prevalent growing up, and I didn't believe it. How could the one thing that I want to do and need to do every day be the thing that causes me to starve? Why can't I, as an artist, be compensated to create dreams, to create fantasy, to do whatever I can possibly do? And that's what I've been trying to do for, you know, almost 40 years now, and I think I'm doing it. So this is the first fish. This is the first one I ever made, the sculpture that started everything. So every single fish that I have cast is based off of this one tiny sculpture. I wanted to create that, that conversation between the, the objects that make up the pixels and the picture that the pixels create. I wanted to create that tension of what it is and what it's made out of. The skull with flowers, is, it's called What Remains. It's such a, a cliche theme, life and death. And I wanted to see if I could do it in a different way, do it in a way that made sense to me. And so it just becomes a cycle. Every time you, you move away from it, the skull becomes clearer. As you get closer, the field of flowers becomes clearer. That's where the, the tension starts sort of hitting you. And it's like, oh, that, that's what it's supposed to be, you know. So this one, it's a big piece. It's the most detailed translucent piece that I've ever done. Translucent pieces are a little bit more complicated. I work over a photograph because the color telegraphs through the pieces. And so what I'm able to do is shoot anywhere from 10 to 30 colors. So if they're thicker, they're darker. If they're thinner, they're not. And so when you start overlaying them, they change color. So it becomes this whole challenge and this puzzle of laying the base color down and then the gradation and then laying on top of it to blend it all in. This has actually been a lot of fun to do. And because of this piece, I now have different ideas for other pieces that I want to do. So everything that I learn, every new project, makes every other project that I've done more interesting. It's like, oh, I could take this further. I could combine them. You know, and that's what the, the mosaic work allowed me to do, is combine my love of drawing and painting and sculpture and design and fabrication. And I'm just touching the tip of, uh, of what I can do with it and what I can do with the idea. But let's just say something's not going to step in the way and go, oh, this is neat, let's try this. I think that the dream, and I've heard this from other artists and creative people, and they're the only group of people that I found that wish that they could never die because they have so many ideas that they'll never be able to get through. And it's such a shame. You know, and that's, that's what it is for me. If I could just live forever, I probably would never be bored. 
because I would be able to explore every idea that I could ever do, ever.